my lovelies. Ooh, what's all that about? Welcome back to Ruth Power Beauty. Um, hello to new subscribers. Welcome. It's lovely to see you. Hello to all you lovely subscribers that basically know how all this works and yes. Hello everybody. So it's a really nice day today. Although the sun's not shining, it, it's warm and I've got my arms out, which doesn't happen often. Um, it's a bank holiday in the UK and where we live, there's a festival on. There's just loads of great stuff. There's food stuff and stuff for kids and there's World War II memorabilia and there's singers and musicians and acrobatic aeroplanes. And we had the most incredible fireworks on Saturday evening. It was outstanding, I have to say. It's one of the joys of living here. They really put so much effort into the area and it was fantastic. And I actually managed to film some things for you. I know. And I think there may even be enough stuff to do a vlog. After saying I'd vlog and I haven't and we're in May, and it's favourites because it's the end of May, how guilty do I feel that we're just about halfway through the year and I haven't done any tutorials or any vlogs. I apologise, I haven't forgotten. It's just, you know, we've been decorating and house stuff. And we've also had family staying. Um, last week we had my Craig's sister and her partner staying and for the next two weeks we have Craig's parents staying so there's a lot happening um, but at the moment I've got the house to myself um, so I'm going to film May favourites so yes there's lots happening but there's a vlog that's the most important thing there's a vlog coming up I hope you enjoy it there's a bit of all sorts there's very little of me talking on camera if anything it's just stuff that's happened and places we've gone and I actually remembered to film. Um, some of it's on my phone, so it's not great. Um, I did take the camera I film on out with me, which is a huge camera and it's a bit awkward to film with, but I did it. But I really need a vlogging camera, so I'll look into that, but I'm, I'm really excited that I've filmed stuff. Right, let's crack on. Sorry, just off on a tangent there. It's May favourites already, and I've got, I think it's mainly, yeah, it's makeup and I've got the books that I'm reading as well. So let's crack on my lovelies. If you read my blog, you will know that I have an issue with dark circles and sometimes they really bother me and sometimes I just think, oh, whatever. And I absolutely adore the Bobbi Brown corrector in Bisque. It's just the perfect peach color. It doesn't accentuate any fine lines and other products work over the top. And I always apply a corrector first then I use foundation, then I use concealer. But I found something else that is just about nudging my love of Bobbi Brown into second place. Sadly, it's not a drugstore item. I really wish it was. I found some really nice dupes and things, but this baby, oh, hello. This is Chanel, and it's their Corrector Perfection Concealer. So you can use it for all sorts. And I've got it in shade 30, which is quite a dark shade, but I prefer a corrector to sort of disguise. It's not there to highlight or brighten any areas. And I love this. It's just in a simple sort of concealer-like tube, and it has the doe foot foam applicator. And I just dot this under my eyes and either work it in with my ring fingers or with a brush. But it is gorgeous, very smooth, very creamy, it's not too heavy, it doesn't cake. I've loved this and I find myself reaching more for this than the Bobbi Brown at the moment. But yeah, if you're struggling to find anything, give the Chanel a whirl. Actually, looking in this box, I do apologise, May is high-end month, obviously. I've just realised that everything is, is high-end. Sorry about that. And we're on to Chanel again and it's their lipstick. It's La Petilante, my French is rubbish, um, shade 49 and I love it, I'm wearing it now. It's a red, coral, pink, it is the Rouge L'Eau Velvet, um, which are beautiful. So you're not getting a satin finish but it's not matte that it's so drying. But I love this and I've worn it, well, just about every day since I bought it. Beautiful. 
I like Chanel. They do such a good lipstick, great colour range, but this particular shade is the perfect spring summer shade. Yes, I'll probably wear it in the winter, but it's a proper, it's just got that uplifting colour that you want in the sunny weather, but gorgeous, gorgeous. And it feels lovely on the lips. It lasts. I can have a cup of coffee. I can eat lunch and the colour's still there. I don't really have to reapply it. Really lovely. And that shade again is 49. I'll put a link to all the products below in the description box, but uh, gorgeous colour. Next, a huge love for this and I adore cream eyeshadows. To be fair, I adore all eyeshadows and you know I have a bit of a problem with eyeshadow palettes, but I do like cream eyeshadows and I love MAC, I love Bobbi Brown, but oh, hello. I love the texture of this and the colour is beautiful. It's this gorgeous little package pot from Charlotte Tilbury and it's her Eyes to Mesmerise range, which is a cream shadow and this is in the shade Mona Lisa. It's absolutely beautiful. It's almost a mink colour. It's got that bronze, that brown through it, but definitely the sort of a pinky mauve tone running through. I love it. I have hazel eyes and it's gorgeous. It works beautifully under the eye. It holds the colour. It doesn't run. I do use an eyelid primer because I have oily eyelids, but this really does stay in place. For me, this is just the best colour. There is another one I've seen that I like the look of. Can't remember what it's called, but at the moment I'm sticking with this. It applies really well with the dual fibre brushes from Real Techniques or just with your ring finger and blending it over the mobile lid. It also blends beautifully up to the brow where you can just sort of soften the colour as you head upwards. But I've absolutely loved this and you only need a tiny amount to get a proper hit of colour. I'm wearing it today. I haven't got a lot on. I often go really smoky with it, but just a subtle hint today, but it's just gorgeous. Another eye colour and I'm really back in love with the By Terry Ombre Black Stars. Um, they are ridiculously priced for what they do. Boots number seven do a dupe for this, the shade and define, but I like the boots, I have a couple of them, but I do find the By Terry Ombre Black Star is smoother, I find the colours better, it holds better, the finish is just better. But this particular shade, which is 13 Brown Perfection, is just beautiful and it's an absolute match for the Mona Lisa. Um, eyeshadow cream from Charlotte Tilbury, it's got that same tone to it. So if you do want to just use it under the eye area in the Mona Lisa on the mobile lid, you can. This is beautiful, it just stays there till I remove it on an evening um, and I like the smoothness of it. Again, you can use them over the whole of the lid. It's so easy. If you're going away somewhere and you don't want to take loads of eyeshadows, it's all there in one and it'll blend easily with your finger straight from the bullet itself you can pop it on and blend or with a dual fiber brush really really good products i'm loving them all at the moment but this in particular shade 13 is my favorite okay an oldie but a goodie i've had this a long time and i do like a bit of highlighter to be fair i like a lot of highlighter and i whack it on i know there are all those rules out there but hey life's too short and you know you can always take it off if you don't like it, but I've really got back into cream highlighters and it's the Benefit That Gal Brightening Face Primer. Never quite got the idea of the primer aspect of this. I've never used it as a primer. It is highly um, luminous, so I wouldn't put it over my whole face, but it's beautiful as a highlighter. Take the lid off, you have a protective cap and then it's got the little perforated holes. You twist the bottom and your product comes through that and it's a sort of pinky pearlescent colour. I tend to sort of turn it up a couple of clicks and I just dot three dots on my face and I work it and down the centre of my nose. I've had this ages. I've no idea how much is left. That's the annoying thing because you can't tell, but it just keeps working. So I keep using it. If you want a highlighter that's worth the money, this certainly is just for the fact it lasts for years. Um, I think I must have had it 18 months plus, but really, really good. And it does give a very flattering highlight as well. It's not too shimmery, really pretty pinky glow. If you're a little bit like me where gold 
um, in the highlighters doesn't always work. It can look too yellow. I often find the ones with the pink through are more flattering, especially as I've got older. But yes, I've regained a love for this. Now this. Oh, hello. This is one of my emotional um, purchases. And I am going to put a post up on my blog about buying things not that you need them and they probably won't suit you but you just look at it and think oh, I've got to have it and I'm a little bit like that about colour I can see things and think oh and be damned if it would suit me or not but this little beauty um well what can I say it's a teeny tiny solo eyeshadow from NARS it's their collaboration with Christopher Kane it is a limited edition and this is called Outer Limits now what I will say to you is be careful online because some of the pictures I've seen on online sites do not do this justice and I don't think it's going to look great on camera but I promise you it's gorgeous it looks almost tangerine at certain angles it is highly shimmery when you look over it there's pink there's silver there's almost like a greeny tinge but when you actually apply it I've applied it over cream eyeshadow on an evening and it is just glorious it has a mauve hint as well just on a eyeshadow brush and pressed onto cream shadow it holds it's not so glittery like pigment that it transfers down it is beautiful I wore it for a meal out with um, Craig's sister and her partner for her birthday and she was asking what I had on my eyes it looks so pretty it's not OTT if you look a bit older like myself and you don't want to be too shimmery but you still like to sort of whack it up a bit when you're going out this is gorgeous but it is a thing of beauty guys it really is i've looked through other products in the range great collaboration but this to me is outstanding it is beautiful and last the product i didn't think i'd like i'm always a bit funny about bronzers that mix a bit of color but I do know Too Faced are pretty damn good at the bronzers they do. Um, I'm not so keen on the packaging, can I just say? It's very cheap and plastic and I think Too Faced could do a lot better because they're really vamping up their products. But this needs to be better thought out. It is the Pink Leopard... It is the Pink Leopard Blushing Bronzer. You've got a bit of everything in here. Um... And there you go. I think it's self-explanatory really, isn't it? You've got the bronzer and you've got the blusher. It works really well. If you like a little hint of contouring without that heavy sharpness of a bronzer on its own, this is perfect. But, oh hello. It is the best eyeshadow ever Fabulous eyeshadow. It's so flattering. It gives just enough colour it is beautiful, a really nice texture. I've worn it more as an eyeshadow than I have as a blusher and a bronzer. Beautiful, I love it. Um, yeah, what more can I say? Great, great product. They've had Pink Leopard out before, but I think they've rebranded a lot of the products and the bronzers are back out again. But this for me is outstanding, really like it. And it's great that it's a multi-purpose product, so I could take it away with me. And I've got my bronzer, my blusher and an eyeshadow all in one and a mirror as well to do my makeup with. So really great product from Too Faced and I've loved it this month. And those are the products, all colour all high-end sorry about that it does happen let's go on to the books I'm reading okay on to the books that I'm reading this month and the first one is by Antoine Laurent or Lorraine and it's the red notebook and this has been translated from the French novel um, it's about a red notebook um, it's about a bookseller who comes across an abandoned handbag in a Parisian street and feels impelled to return it to its owner. The bag contains no phone or contact information but a small red notebook with handwritten thoughts and jottings reveals a person that the bookseller would very much like to meet. Um, so far I'm really enjoying this. Just a little book but a good one. And the next book is The Folded Clock. Um, this is a diary by Heidi Ulovitz. 
Um, gorgeous book. It's a hardback book. I think the title's fabulous, The Folded Clock. And this is just beautiful, this cream and blue cover. Um, Heidi had kept diaries for years and she'd found her diaries years later and decided that she was going to publish parts of them. Um, and it's basically a selection of writings about herself, youth, ageing, betrayal, loyalty, friendship, romance, faith, fate, marriage, family, desire, death, gossip, secrets, art and ambition. Um, a lot in there. Again it's a book I've just started and I actually really like the writing. I like reading sort of diary entries and it's just nice because I think I used to write diaries when I was younger and I think you just properly open and it's written from the heart and I love things like that. So yes, I'm looking forward to reading both of those and I have a feeling I'll probably read them rather quickly so there'll be uh, a few more books this coming month. So my lovelies, that's it. May favourites, all colour. I don't know how that happened, but it did. And obviously there'll be a different selection in June, unless I use the same products over and over again. Thank you as ever for your wonderful support, your lovely comments. Um, it's great to get to know a lot of you over the different social media sites that I'm on. So I often chat to you all on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I have got Periscope, not quite sure how I feel about that yet. I do have a pin interest, um, Pinterest. I always want to call it pin interest. Pinterest, 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 Pinterest. I do have Pinterest. If you're interested in other things I like, I have clothes, garden stuff, house stuff, and a lot of my Rouge Pout Beauty stuff on there as well. So it's all in the description box. But do feel free, if you're on Instagram or Twitter, please do get in touch. I know some people say, oh, I don't like to bother you. You don't just have to talk to me on YouTube. You really can get in touch with me there as well. And I do practically live on Instagram, as a lot of my subscribers will probably tell you. That's where you'll find me. So I'll see you around and about somewhere over the internet and I'll be back soon with another video very soon.